more than my words can say Jesus I come Jesus I come in all my weaknesses you are my confidence Jesus I come Jesus I come
Good morning and welcome to worship. We're so glad you could join us both in person and on our stream. If you could, please stand and join me in singing our opening song. Keep 
worship you. Good morning. My name is uh, Mark Gibbs. I'm the pastor here at St. Michael, just in case you didn't know. Um, welcome to all of you uh, here in the worship space this morning, and also those of you joining us on the stream. We're glad you're with us. Just a couple announcements before we move on here today. Um, first of all, um, I was asked to remind the ladies of the congregation that there is an Eve Circle meeting this Tuesday in the gathering room at 7 o'clock. So um, if you have any questions about that, um, don't ask me because that's all I know. So, um, But if you have any questions, you can uh, call Kathy Bella or call Sharon Saloff. Either one of them can help you out. Uh, the second thing is um, our congregation's annual meeting will take place on Sunday, January 30th. Uh, it takes place at noon, which is right after this service. So make sure you mark your calendars and plan to stay for that. That should be a fairly brief meeting this year. Uh, not too much uh, out of the ordinary that we have to deal with um, at this year's meeting. So uh, come and join us um, if, you, if you can. We'd appreciate it. All right. Uh, just a, a couple announcements here about uh, where we're at in the church year. Uh, we just finished up Christmas, and you'll notice that all of our Christmas decorations have been uh, taken down. Uh, Christmas is actually a, a short season. It's, it's 12 days long. That's where the song 12 Days of, of Christmas comes from. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, Epiphany. Uh, the Feast of Epiphany is a feast in the church year 
uh, that talks about the uh, and remembers the, the coming of the wise men, the, the coming of the kings to, to bow down and worship Jesus. That actually takes place, uh, that, that day, it's a specific day. It's the 13th day after Christmas uh, Day, uh, which is always January 6th. So that took place this past Thursday. So now we're into what's called the season after Epiphany. Um, so for about the next eight weeks, uh, we're going to be talking about the life of Jesus, um, about his teachings, uh, about his healings, um, his miracles, uh, and so forth, and what that means uh, for our lives. So we always kick off the season uh, after Epiphany uh, by talking about baptism. We talk about Jesus' baptism, and we talk about our baptism. So um, I have two lessons for you this morning. The first one is from the book of Romans. Uh, I'm starting at chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We that were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. All right, so that's the end of the Romans lesson. Uh, The lesson uh, from the gospel today I want to share with you is from from Luke's gospel, chapter 3, starting at verse 21. When all of the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. You, With you I am well pleased." You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Okay. Uh, for a memory verse today, I want to use that very last verse there, a part of, of uh, verse 22, um, chapter 3, verse 22. Um, and I'm actually using the Revised Standard Version here uh, because I, I like the fact that they use the word beloved. So would you recite this with me, please? You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. All right, let's say it again. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. So that's a real short, easy verse. So let's see if you've got it memorized. Let's say it together. You are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. All right, did we get that right? Well, I guess it's with you, I am well pleased. Let's do that again. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. All right, I picked that verse because I'm going to kind of zero in on this idea of what it means to be beloved. Um, The point I'm I'm, I'm trying to really get at here uh, this morning is this, that you, uh, the people of God, like Jesus, have had God speak words to you like this. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And that took place in your own baptism. Uh, So just as as God the Father had Jesus undergo baptism, uh, he has linked Jesus' baptism to your baptism and has bestowed on you the title of beloved. All right, we'll we'll talk about this some more. Um, Preachers often, um, when they're preaching on this topic, point out that... that, uh, uh, you know, this was a time in which God gave the Holy Spirit to Jesus. He, he poured out the Holy Spirit on Jesus. Um, and we talk about our own baptisms and that, that God poured out uh, the Holy Spirit on us in our own baptisms. And, and all of that is true. And it's important to talk about that. It's a very important aspect of, of baptism. But I also think this idea that God speaks to us at the same time, he pours out the Spirit and then speaks to us. 
and calls us beloved. I think that's also uh, an important aspect of baptism. And I think sometimes we don't really stop and think about that too much. So I want to do that today. I want to talk about what it means to be beloved by God. Uh, the dictionary, uh, if you look it up, says that, that to be beloved is to be dearly loved, uh, to be much loved, um, to be loved beyond measure. And if you look it up in a thesaurus, look up beloved in a thesaurus, you'll find that the synonyms for beloved are words like you are adored, you are precious, you are cherished, you are favored, you are special. So when God came to Jesus and said, this is my beloved son, he was saying, this is my adored, precious, cherished, favored, special, dearly loved, much loved son. And he says the same thing about us in our baptisms. When, when the waters were poured on our heads and, and the word of God was read over our head, God was reaching down and claiming us and calling us by name and saying, you are my beloved, you are adored, precious, cherished, favored, and special. So that should be good news to you today. I hope that reminds you um, of just what you mean to God. The Greek word being translated here is the word agapitas, agapitas. That's a, that's a mouthful, it really is. But it comes from the same root as the word agape. You may have uh, uh, run across that word in some of your, your studies uh, that you've read and in, in uh, some of the uh, devotionals perhaps that you've used. Um, agape is a special type of, of, of love in the Greek language. It means unconditional love. And so when you are called the beloved, God is saying, I love you unconditionally. Jesus was loved unconditionally by the Father, and you are loved unconditionally by the Father. And so baptism is a sign of that unconditional love that God has for you. If you wonder how God feels about you, just look to your baptism and remember that God said to you, Mary... You are a child of God. You are much beloved. Joe, you are a child of God. You are much loved. In Scripture, uh, in in Holy Scripture, we find that that God links our baptism to Jesus in in several places. Uh, One in particular, uh, in Mark chapter 10, um, there you'll remember that James and John come to, to Jesus and they say, Jesus, we need you to do us a favor. And Jesus says, well, I don't know if I can, but tell me what it is. And, and so uh, James and John proceed to say, um, we want to be your chief deputies. We want to be in charge of all the other apostles. You know, we, you're, you're obviously the boss, but we want to be your deputies. And Jesus says, well, I don't know if I can do that. That's not really for me to say. And then he goes on to say, are you willing to be baptized with the same baptism that I will be baptized with? Are you willing to drink from the same cup that I'm willing to be, that I drink from? And, and uh, they say, oh, of course we are. Um, they don't realize Jesus is talking about his own death uh, on the cross. Um, well, then Jesus says something interesting. He says, well, in fact, you will drink from the same cup that I drink from. You will be baptized with the same baptism with which I and baptized. You see that link there between Jesus' baptism and our baptism? So baptism uh, is also uh, linked to this whole idea that, that when you come to God, when you uh, give your life to God, what you're doing is that you are allowing your old self to die. You're allowing uh, your, your will to be put to death so that it can be replaced with God's will. That's what Jesus did. You know, when he went to the cross, he was doing the will of the Father. And so uh, in Romans 6, we just heard there um, where Paul said, do you not know that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? In other words, we were connected with with the cross in baptism. Our old sinful self was put to death. 
And Paul goes on to say, you had to be put to death so that you could rise a new creation, so that you could be risen like Jesus is risen to live a new life. And then finally, at the end of Jesus' life, there in uh, Matthew 28, 19, you know, he's at the, the end of his time here on earth. You know, he, he's been crucified and buried, and then he was raised from the dead. And after 40 days, he took the disciples out to the Mount of Olives, and he said to them, I'm leaving you now, uh, but I'm going to give you some last instructions. And what does he say to them? He says, go and make disciples and do what with them? Baptize them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, so you see that? Jesus made baptism a sign of the kingdom of God in our midst. In fact, we say that, don't we, in our baptismal liturgy. We say Jesus made baptism a sign of the kingdom. And what that means is, is that in baptism, you have been claimed eternally for God. You are God's children now. And because of that, you are beloved. You know that you are beloved. In your baptism, God spoke to you and said, I love you. I love you unconditionally. Earlier this week, uh, one of our, our members here at St. Michael asked me to, to, to share with him my understanding of, of, of baptism and what I thought about you know, baptizing, baptizing children and, and, and babies and, and why we do that. Um, and I remember uh, sitting there for a moment just thinking about, well, how am I going to respond? And I thought, you know, probably the best way to respond is to talk about the story of the prodigal son. Um, in Luke chapter 15, um, we hear the story, you know, Jesus tells the story about a father who has two sons. Now, this father apparently has some significant wealth. He's, he's got servants. He's got animals. Um, uh, he must be quite wealthy. Um, and so his younger son comes to him and says to him, uh, Father, give me, give me my share of my inheritance. Now, now, the father's not dead yet, but the younger son is very impatient. He wants, his, he wants his money now. And the father obliges, divides up his wealth between the older son and the younger son, and gives the younger son his, his money. And the younger son takes off into the world to do his own thing. And he gets out there and he, you know, he associates with some you know, savory characters. And, and uh, through it all, he ends up blowing all of his money. He ends up flat broke. And when that happens, of course, all of his fair weather friends disappear. And here he is, hungry, cold, unemployed, uh, has, has no money. And so he goes and takes the lowest of all jobs. He takes a job to feed pigs. Uh, in a pigsty. Um, who would want to do that? Not, not too many of us, right? Um, and while he's feeding these pigs, he says to them, uh, he says to himself, man, I, I, these pigs are eating better than I am. I, I wish I could eat the, this food that they're eating. Um, and then a light comes on. The scriptures say he comes to his senses and he realizes that, you know what? Maybe my father wasn't such a bad guy. You know, maybe it wasn't such a bad life living there under my father. But, of course, you know, I've, I've, I've dishonored him now, um, and uh, I've disparaged him. Um, maybe I should just go back and say to him, I don't deserve to be your son. Just treat me like a servant and feed me a little food so I don't starve to death, and I will work like a dog for you. So he, he makes a plan. He heads back. And on his way back, his father is, is, is looking out from the front porch, looks out there and sees his son coming. And guess what he does? He doesn't wait for his son to come up to the porch so he can read him the riot act. But instead, he runs down the stairs, he runs out the road, and he meets his son and he embraces him in the road. And he calls his servants and he says, uh, kill the fatted calf. Get me a robe. Let's put a robe on my son. Let's put a ring on his finger. Let's put sandals on his feet. We have to celebrate because my son, who was dead, is alive. My son, who was lost, has been found. That's, that's how much the father loved his younger son. His younger son had, had totally uh, disparaged his relationship with, with his father. He had, 
He had totally soiled his father's reputation. Um, he had a, a abused his wealth. Uh, he, he, actually, he had abused his position as a son in the household to demand all this wealth before his father had even died. And he said, I, I just des- now I just des- deserve to be treated like a servant. But his father said to him, I'm not going to treat you like a servant. You are my son. I loved you long ago unconditionally, and I still love you unconditionally. Of course, there's another son in the household, right? There's the older son, and he's out in the field. He's the dutiful son. He stayed. He worked hard to rebuild his father's fortune. Um, He stayed and did what his father asked of him. In fact, he's doing that at that very moment. He's out in the field tending to his father's flocks. And he hears this ruckus down at the main house, and he's wondering what's going on. And, and uh, pretty soon a servant comes out to him, and he asks the servant, what's, what's going on? And they said, oh, we're throwing a big feast, and your, your father sent me to get you because uh, your younger brother who was dead is now alive. He's, he's come back to us. Well, how does the older son react? Is he happy? Is he filled with joy that his younger brother has returned? No, absolutely not. He's indignant. He's not just indignant at his younger brother. He's he's indignant at his father, that his father would welcome this wayward son back and throw this party for him. And so he won't go. He won't go to the party. So the servant goes back and tells the father, "Your, your, your older son, he's not coming in. He's angry. So what does the older father, what does the father do? Does he does he get indignant? Does he get angry? Does he dig his heels in and stand his ground? No, he runs out to his older son and he says, son, you have to come and be a part of this celebration. And the older son says, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I'm not going to celebrate this, this young brother of mine who has disparaged your name and who soiled your reputation and, and blown your wealth. And the father says, please, you, you have to come. Please understand you know, your, your brother was dead and now he's alive. Your, your brother was lost and now he's found. And the younger son or the older son says, hey, wait a second. I have been here the whole time. I have obeyed every one of your commands and you didn't even give me as much as a kid to kill and to celebrate with my, my friends. And what does the father say? I can just imagine him taking his son by the elbows. And he says, son, everything I have is yours. You know that. But your brother was dead, and now he's alive. In other words, what's the father saying here? He's saying to the younger son, I love you. I loved you unconditionally from the beginning. I love you now unconditionally, despite of what you've done. And he says to the older son, I loved you from the beginning. I love you unconditionally now. And it's not because of what you've done. He says to the younger son, I love you unconditionally because of who you are. You are my son. To the older son, he says, I love you unconditionally because of who you are. You are my son. And that's what God says to us in baptism. I don't love you because of what you do or what you've accomplished or you know, uh, uh, you know how, how faithful or good you've been. I love you because you are my child. You are my beloved. I think that's really important for us as we kick off this new year, 2022, to, to stop for a moment and remember that. Every single one of us who has been baptized has heard those words from God. God has said to you, you are my beloved. I unconditionally love you. I always will. Nothing you can do can make me stop loving you. If you're not baptized, we encourage you to get baptized as soon as possible so you too can hear those words from God. Why do we baptize babies? Why do we baptize young children who may not have much of an idea of what's going on? Because it's God who's acting in baptism. It's God who's coming and saying, you are my child. I love you unconditionally. I will always love you unconditionally. Why would we deny that to anyone ever? So yes, 
We, we dispense baptismal grace freely around here. Uh, we always will because that's the kind of God we serve. At the bottom of the uh, sermon notes this morning, I, I put a faith challenge. I uh, ask you down there to, when you go home this week, to read John 13, 34. Um, it's uh, where Jesus says, A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And what I ask you is this. Let me just read what I, what I challenge you there. How does the knowledge that we are God's beloved sons and daughters impact how we live out this command of Jesus? In other words, now that you know that God loves you unconditionally, that you are precious and adored and cherished by God, how does that change how you treat one another? How does that change how you treat your fellow man and woman and child in your life? The, the people that God brings into your orbit. Think about that. Pray about that um, as we begin this year, 2022. And let me close with just a few more words uh, from Holy Scripture. This is from Jeremiah 31.3. I love this verse. I have loved you with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. What an awesome God we serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to go to our loving God in prayer... Let me ask, are there any joys or victories that you'd like to share with the congregation this morning? Birthdays, anniversaries? All right. Um, someone at the uh, early service shared uh, the joy that uh, uh, we have a, a wonderful food pantry that uh, once a month dispenses food to the people in our uh, community, and uh, we had a food pantry yesterday, and uh, Mary Evil Sizer and her staff do such a wonderful job uh, in uh, providing, uh, you, you know, food to the community. So we, uh, that certainly is a joy that we're able to serve the community in that way, and that we have such, uh, such faithful servants uh, in making that happen. All right, uh, additions to our prayer list, I have several. Um, first of all, just an update on uh, Judy Governo. Um, she is continuing in her recovery, um, and hopefully one of these days, she told me, uh, she's hoping to be able to hobble in here uh, with this big halo on her leg, um, but she is, uh, she is progressing as the doctors had hoped. Uh, Jean Schmidlin had uh, back surgery, and she is recovering. Uh, Harlan uh, Jording, uh, we prayed last week for him. He was having surgery on his hip. Um, that has taken place. Uh, he has left the hospital and is now at Hickory Ridge um, for therapy and rehabilitation. Also, I want to lift up my mother, Mary Lou, um, has uh, had a, a relapse of her lymphoma. Um, about every three or four years, her lymphoma seems to come back. She's, she's been treated at least four other times um, in the last 20 years for this lymphoma. Um, so on Tuesday, she's going in for um, a biopsy and for, to have a port put in uh, to a vein so that they can give her chemotherapy through the port. So uh, we we'll want to pray for, for Mary Lou um, uh, for a safe surgery and for successful um, chemotherapy. Um, I also have some prayer cards here this morning. We want to pray for the family and friends of Lois O'Leary, passed away this week. I want to pray for Eric Smith. Uh, he has uh, stage four colon cancer. He is a cousin of uh, Pastor Judy Smith. Uh, and we want to pray for Amber uh, Cops. Uh, Amber has also been diagnosed with cancer and will be beginning treatment here shortly. Anyone else that we should pray for this morning? 
Yes. Okay. Okay, so we're going to uh, uh, pray for Audrey. That's Arrow's um, granddaughter um, is under the weather. Okay, so we'll pray for Audrey this morning. Anyone else? All right, we want to continue to pray for everyone uh, in our congregation and community who's contracted um, COVID, and we want to continue to pray for for. Uh, continued healing uh, from the COVID. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, um, what a joy it is to be in your house this morning. What a privilege it is uh, to be able to come here um, and hear you address us through your holy word um, to speak to us directly. And today we, we heard you say to us, um, I love you. And Lord, what a joy it is to hear you say those words to us. What, what a comfort it is to know that we are unconditionally loved by you. Um, and it is amazing, Lord, that you don't uh, demand um, that we be perfect. Um, in fact, you acknowledge and, and know that there's no way that, that in our, our, our world, uh, in our sinful state, that we are able to be perfect. But you have provided a way through your son, Jesus, and through his cross uh, for us to be washed clean of our sin, uh, that through the, the, the power of repentance and forgiveness, we are made new. You draw us close to you. You remove all those stumbling blocks that keep us from, from snuggling up to you and, and living in an intimate relationship with you. And we know, Lord, as we, as, as we get close to you, we continually hear you whispering those words to us. I, I love you. You are precious to me. I adore you. You are cherished. You are favored. You are special. Um, and what joy it is um, to know that you think about us in that way, O oh Lord. And so we return the favor. We come to you, Lord, and we glorify you. We honor you and we, we respect you because you are our God and Lord and Father. And Jesus is our brother. Ah, what a joy it is to know that, that he's got our back, uh, that his cross and his sacrifice are sufficient to reconcile us to you, Lord God. And so we thank you for that. And what a joy it is to know um, that we need not fear you, Lord God, that we, that we can come to you and share with you our innermost thoughts and feelings and concerns and our victories and our, our prayer requests. And so we do that to do today. We, we thank you, Lord, for uh, this church, for this church family. We, we thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. We thank you for, um, for our food pantry which goes uh, out uh, and, and, and provides food uh, for the needy in our community. Um, we thank you, uh, Lord, um, that you call us your children. Uh, what a joy it is to know that we are unconditionally loved. And what a joy it is to know that we can bring to you our prayer requests. And so we do that at this time. We ask that you be with little Audrey as she's under the weather. We pray, Lord, you'll bring your healing upon her, that you'll just anoint her with your healing power. Keep her safe. Bring her to recovery. We continue to pray for Judy, and we continue to pray for Jean Schmidlin uh, and for Harlan Jording um, as they recover uh, from surgeries. Uh, we continue to pray um, for those that we just lifted up to you. We pray for Amber as she begins to um, have cancer treatment. We pray for Mary Lou as she begins her cancer treatment. We pray for Eric Smith um, who is battling uh, cancer. And we pray for the family and friends of Lois O'Leary uh, in the midst of their grief. And we pray that you would bring them comfort and consolation. Lord, hear our prayers for all of these people. Bring your healing power to bear in their lives. Give them the healing that you desire them to have, whatever that may be. 
may they know they are not alone, that you are there with them all the time. Finally, Lord, we pray that you would help us to translate all of this blessing that you give us, all of this unconditional love, into unconditional love from us to the world. May we be a witness to the world of your unconditional love. May we be a model for it. May we model that love as as Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Help us to fulfill that command to the best of our ability, Lord God. And in doing so, may the world come to know your love. May the world come to know you as we know you. May they receive the comfort and healing uh, and hope that we have received through your son, Jesus. May you be glorified and honored by your church and by your world, by your creation. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This time I'll ask the ushers to come forward and receive the offering, and I'll turn it back over to uh, Sean to uh, lead us out in song.
want to thank you for joining us today. We got one more that we're going to do. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry the kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing to love and serve the Lord.